Welcome back to K-12 Analytics Engineering. I am Marco Salcozer, and today I wanted to talk about data out from EdFi. And I wanted to talk about this because my view on it has actually shifted recently, and I wanted to talk about why it has shifted and in what way. So previously in this channel, I showed a video where I recommended in my ideal K-12 tech stack that one should replicate their operational data store into a cloud data warehouse and then they should perform transformations there using a tool such as dbt to build out the data models for analytics well recently i've been building out an elt workflow for some districts that only have access to the edfi api and i started that because i wanted to help them get access to their data what i did not realize was through that process i would actually see that retrieving data via the api is often a whole lot easier than going the ODS route. So I wanted to talk about why. The first reason is because when you look at the API surface, there are around 130 endpoints. Whereas if you look at the underlying ODS, there are over 540 tables. And so when you're looking at just querying the data, querying those API endpoints that have been, data has been pulled from and stored in a cloud data warehouse, versus querying the ODS tables, we're just dealing with a whole lot less tables if you are looking at the data retrieved from the API. So let's start with Student Special Education Program Associations. Now when I look at the payload that you would get back, and we'll look at post here because that is a nice quick way to see the various fields, uh, but these are the same fields that you would get back if you were running a GET request. So when I look at that, I get a whole bunch of things here. I get the student's begin date. I get the student reference to get their ID. I get their disabilities array. I get their end date uh, and so on. So I get a whole bunch of data and you can see this is quite, quite long here. Now let's look at the SQL query for this. Now this SQL query is not even complete to pull the amount of data that I just showed you for the JSON payload, but we can already see that we have to query the table, Student Special Education Program Association, and then we have to join on General Student Program Association, and that's because Student Special Ed Program Association is, is subclassing the General Student Program Association, and so we have to do that join to be able to get the end date for the student. Otherwise, we just get the start date, which is in that Special Education table. So we have to join that on, then we have to join on the student table, because from the two top ones, we get the student Uzi, but we don't get the student unique ID. So we have to join on edfi.student, then we have to join on descriptor to get things such as a special education setting, and then we have to join on the student special education program association disability, and that right there already, if we wanted to write a complete query and we jumped down and we looked at student special education, I mean, we're looking at a bunch of tables right here that would have to be joined together to get to what we're getting from the JSON payload just from hitting the API endpoint. And then again, remember, we have to factor in that general student program association. And so we have to go up and we have to look at those tables. So we also have to join in these, but remember to pull those in. And so there are just a lot of joins that we have to get right to be able to get to the data that we're just getting back from the API endpoint for student special education program associations. And so what's really happening here is that if you replicate the ODS into Google BigQuery, as I've been doing uh, for so long with my analytics work, I am making it easy to get access to the data in BigQuery, but the data are the ODS tables, and there are over 540 of them and so it is a lot of work to be able to write those long, big SQL queries to join together all of those tables to get to the data that I want. Whereas if I put the work into my extract and load from the EdFi API into Google BigQuery, the result is a whole lot less tables that I'm looking to join and each table having far more data. Let's look at one more real quick just to see how much easier it is to work with the data that's coming out of the API over the ODS. And let's look at the school's endpoint. So the school's endpoint has a whole bunch of data available. You get the grade levels, you get the school ID, you get the local education agency ID, that parent one, you get the addresses, 
Uh, you get all of this information. Now, when you go into the ODS and you look at schools, what you're going to notice is, is that there's not actually that much data there. And the big thing that's missing here is the uh, name of institution. And that's because this actually has a parent class of education organization. So you have all of these school tables here, and these have to be joined onto education organization to be able to get all of the information that is coming through in just that school's API uh, endpoint. And that is interesting and also very confusing because people, when they start working uh, with these, these two sides, the API and the ODS, they realize that there isn't an education organization's endpoint, right? There's an education organization network associations, but there's, and other ones, but there's no just education organizations. And that's because education organization is the base class in schools, local education organizations. Those are subclassing that base class. And so there is a structure there to be able to normalize the data properly on the ODS side that you really don't want to be concerned about because it's quite complex and frankly confusing and it's a whole lot easier to just use the API and hit the local education agency's endpoint and hit the school's endpoint and have all of the data for each just inside of that one endpoint. Another thing to discuss is the EDFI data standard. The EDFI data standard is the EDFI unifying data model and a set of REST API bindings. And so when you're talking about interfacing with the EDFI API for data out, you're talking about using the EDFI data standard. When you're talking about using the ODS for data out, you are not talking about the data standard anymore. You're just talking about the storage mechanism that the API is using to store the data on the back end. And so we really, when we think about the ODS now, we really should not be too concerned about it at all. We should set it up and we should forget it. And we should use the API for everything because then we are focusing on the data standard layer. The other thing to be aware of is there have been times where the API surface stays the same, but the ODS table structure changes. So columns are moved around, tables are redefined, and that's done because they're constantly thinking about how to best normalize the data. And if you're uh, writing SQLs, then those are going to be messed up through the work. Whereas if you're going the API route, you wouldn't have had to worry about it. Now in a future video that's not too far off, I'm actually going to be showing a demo of a ELT workflow that I created to pull data from EDFI API resources, push the data into BigQuery, and then query it there to produce denormalized tables, specifically the analytics middle tier. That's going to be released free and open source and put on the EDFI exchange as well. And so I hope that this video talking about API versus ODS has helped you understand why I've started to look more toward the API in my work over the ODS and why I think that's a better route for us to be pointed toward. And then also with the future video and the code that I'll be releasing, hopefully that makes the transition a bit easier as well if you are using the ODS today.